a demon right there. Right. Because that's actual, um, that's an actual man. So when you follow him, you follow, you pick up his spirit. So, back to the point. The reason why we affliction, reason, the reason why we're into slavery and our affliction is because we don't know this right here. Go read. Romans 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? So if you don't know that, if you don't really know Christ, how can you believe in somebody you haven't heard? Because what have they been telling the black man? You are nothing. You are porch monkey. You are egg flick. You know what I'm saying? Every nation look at you as nothing. So how can I say that Christ looked like you when you never heard that? Because you've been told that was Christ. But the true Messiah looked like you. He was a black man. Right. You know, right. one man. He didn't care. He told you signs then because you know why? You couldn't read. So now that he know you read now, so now he filter everything out. You know what I'm saying? But back then in the old dictionaries in the 60s, it said that the hair of wool is the hair of a Negro. You know what I'm saying? So that's the image of Christ. That's what we are here trying to show our people how did Christ look. So therefore, therefore when we tell our people that they are the most powerful people on the face of the earth, they can understand that Christ looks like them. I'm going to tell you another secret. If you come from nothing, how can you take nothing from nothing? When they came over here, they beat you at your identity. So if you had no identity, so why they beat nothing from nothing? You know what I'm saying? So and also, if they told you Christ looked like you, a black man, then they can't tell you nothing. You know what I'm saying? If Christ looked like you, they can't say, oh, you just three-fifths of a man. You at the bottom of the totem pole. You know what I'm saying? You an eggplant. You were just in the, uh, uh, in the jungle swinging from trees. They can't tell you that. So that's what read it again. And how? Then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. Right, so how can you call on something that you don't believe? You don't know nothing about. You never, our people never heard this Christ right here. They never heard us, they, they never heard nobody bringing it out the way we do it. Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And, and, go ahead. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So how can they hear without a preacher? That's what we out here for. Putting our, you, do you know, do y'all understand we putting our life on the line for our people? Right. We putting our life on the line for y'all. So because we know y'all haven't heard about this Christ in the Bible. So that's why we put our life on the line for our people. Matter of fact, give me 2 Corinthians 12 and 15. And when you yeah. read it, read it with power. That's what you do, read it with power, man. Because they got to feel it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we got to do to our people because we out here preaching. We want to we be destroyed for this. They turn it just like the apostles, the disciples, the prophets. They were destroyed for teaching the word of God. Do you, know, do you understand that? You understand that? You do understand that? What's your name? Antonio? Who? Vince. Okay, all praise, all praise. I'm glad you brought us in because it's, it's something, the spirit is something y'all have to Go ahead. Second Corinthians 12, verse 15. Go ahead. And I will very gladly bend and be spent for you. Go, the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. Read it again. I will very gladly spend and be spent for so like, you. Like we said, we put our life on the line for this truth. And but we gladly put our life on the line. We rejoice in putting our life on the line for our people because that's what it's about. Because we understand this is what it's going to take to restore our people. Because your politicians, your rappers, your entertainers are not going to tell you these things. They not. Go ahead. Go. No. The more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. So the more we love our people, the more we're going to be hated. The Go more on. they're going to be trying to put us to death. You Go got hear them like talking about us right now. They hate what we're doing because they get paid off your ignorance. The other nations get paid off your ignorance. So what we're gonna do is don't let them get paid off your ignorance. Now stand up and be a man and have a cop, have a confidence in yourself and your people. Our people don't have confidence in each other because we quickly sell each other out. Because we have no culture. We have no identity. We don't know that the true Messiah looked like us. That we are the chosen people. That the Jews was black. You know what I'm saying? The Israelites were our people. The blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Puerto Ricans, the Dominicans, was your people. Read. Mm -hmm. Read it from the top again. 
and I will verily gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. The less will be loved. And when a so-called white man hates you less, it's time to make a plea bargain, to have you a turncoat, a traitor, an infidel to your people. If not, then he gonna try to destroy your image, and if that don't work, then he gonna kill you. That's right. right. That's what it means by you gonna be less loved. This Bible got us, this Bible bear witness with our spirit all day. You have not, nobody out here have been taught to this Bible. Well, 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 nobody been taught this Bible the correct way. Sister, you haven't been taught this Bible the correct way. Did you know that? Did you know that you haven't been taught this Bible the correct way? Yes, sir. So come and converse with us. We your brothers. We're here to teach our people the Bible that Christ looks like you. Yes, right. you are the chosen people. Right. This is not a so-called white man book. This is your black history book right here. Right. This is your photo album. So come and get this knowledge. This is this is the water of life. This is the water you will never thirst from again. Right. What do you mean by thirst from? You will never be caught up in different doctrines anymore. You have your true identity. You have your nationality. That's what we are here to show our people. That's what the most I want. He wants you brothers to raise up and be a man and, and lead your people. Because what it says, the harvest is plenty, but the labor's a few. So the most high is calling you. What y'all gonna do? Matter of fact, give me all uh, um, Surat 77. So have yeah, you heard about Mike Brown? You hear about Mike Brown? How you feel about that? So it makes you mad? Yeah. So it makes you mad, okay. No, I'm gonna use that C77 in the Bible. I'm sorry, my bad, my bad. <laughs> my bad, yeah. Um, so, y'all don't like that, right? That touch of a soft spot, right? Because like they say back in the, in the, in the world, they say that if one, man, if one black man is fear, we all should be in fear. Have you heard that before? If one black man is in fear, we all should be in fear. You know what I'm saying? He don't, have to worry. he don't have to worry about the police racial profiling him, pulling him over and gunning him down. He used to get he used to get out of his car and saying, why did you pull me over? What did I do? You have no right. Can I have your badge number? If, if we pointed the police badge number, we're going to have five holes in it. Right. But back to y'all point. How you feel about Mike Brown again? It, it, it's irritating, right? You. Right, right, right. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Any man mad. A wise man mad. A, a fool mad. A wise man mad. So the Bible says oppression. Oppression makes a wise man mad. Not a fool. So you know what you know what happens when you make a wise man mad? Now he's gonna utilize his ideas. He's gonna generate thoughts. They're gonna start to percolate, and then he's gonna start trying to find a solution to get his people out of sedition. That's when the wise man get mad. That's why the Bible, the Bible is specific when it's talking about. It's, it didn't say oppression make a fool mad or anyone mad, but a wise man. A wise man mad. Because you know what? Because anybody can be mad. What is the what is the difference between a person knowing the problem but no solution? Do nothing about it. You're worse than the person who don't know. So the Bible said it makes a wise man mad. So now, what, what do we learn about why are people in these conditions? Why are they forefathers so our forefathers do slavery? Huh? Now nah, it's going to be done for you because you get it for me. Woo! That's right. So that's, right. that's what it's about. I appreciate what you guys are doing. I think you're doing the right thing. For our people, yeah. yeah. For, for everybody. For our people. The Bible is everybody. everybody. That's, see, that's what I'm talking about. They've been trying to teach our people so long, they don't know their place. They think they automatically over you. But they don't, they don't understand. They're the, they the dog that the Bible right. speaks about. That's, that's right. right. Did y'all know that? Or do y'all think Christ came for everybody? We can do, we can do that. Destroy it right now. That's a lie. That's, that's, matter of fact, read that, read, read that real quick and give me Isaiah 29, 13. Read. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Uh-huh. Surely, oppression. Making a wise man mad, uh -huh. and a gift destroys the heart. A gift, oppression make a wise man mad, and a gift, and a gift destroys the heart. Every time our people rise up and try to fight, either they try to destroy our people, or they try to give them a gift, they try to pay them off. That's why the, straight, that's why the scriptures say, a gift destroys the heart. We don't want our people money, we don't want the other nation's money, we don't want nothing. We want our people to repent. That's, right. that's what we ask. Right. 
It's for y'all to repent and turn to the laws of God. Because that's why our people were destroyed. And the only way we'll come out of this condition is to turn back to the laws of God and the faith in Christ. That's what we are here for. Through the foolishness of preaching is going to raise up our people. Because the most highest chiefs, he chose the base people to confound the, 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 um, the wise of the world. That's what we are here for. Because everything they learned in their theology school, bring everything right here. We're going to smash it and break it up and give it back to them. That's what we're here for. Right. That's what, that's what the true men of the Lord is about. That's why we've been studying this Bible distinctly. To come out here and talk to our people and crush any doctrine that's been poured, that's been poured upon our people. Free. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth uh -huh. and with their lips, do honor me. So, but, but like that brother said, he loved Lord. He loved God. And I started asking him questions about how do he love God? He had to walk away. So that's how our people under God with their lips and their tongues, but they don't know him. Because our people is just all lip service. They, they just all talk. They shoot the most high, they shoot the most high ghost. You know what I'm saying? But well, go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. But have removed their heart far from me. How did they move their heart far from God? You're not keeping God's laws. You saying you love God, but you're breaking God's Sabbath. You say you love God, but you, you got a baby booty chin. Right. You say you love God, but you got a bald head. Right. You say you love God, you don't have fringe on the bottom of your garments. Right. Right. These are things that, that we have as a nation. That's what they took from you. They took your identity from you. You understand that? Free. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So it's saying their fears are taught by the precepts of men. Do any one of you brothers know what that means? Do their precepts or talk by the do their precepts or talk by the precepts of men? What is it talk? Their fear is taught by the precepts of men. What does that say? Read that last part again. And their fear is taught by the precepts of men. So what it's talking about, they fear is taught by the precepts of men. This man right here told you how to love Christ. He told you Christmas is in the Bible. He told you you're supposed to celebrate Halloween. He told you when a new year begins. He told you, he told you, this is how Christ looks. Yeah. Them the precepts of men. So yeah. therefore, when you think about the Bible and how to fear God, you think of that. That's right. So what we're trying to show y'all how to fear God is and how to have understanding is about keeping God's laws. That's what we're doing. Because that so-called white man turned everything upside down. And we are here to turn, we are here with the truth to right side it back up. Right. Right. That's what we're here for. And guess what? Our people have been caught up in lies for so long, they don't know how to accept the medicine. The medicine hurt. That's like a person been oh, strung, strung out on drugs for like 10 years. And when he decides to get, his body's gonna renege. You know what I'm saying? His body's gonna re renege. You see New Jack City, you see Pookie. You see how his body shut down on him because his body is used to the drugs. So now you're telling our people, Christianity is not the way they want to renege. No, not my Jesus. You say Christ only came for the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American. Oh, not my Jesus, John 3, 16. You tell them Christians not in the Bible, they just go, they go berserk. Because they, they body, their mind is not used to that right They Bible is not, they, they mind is used to this right here. Right. And they mind is not used to this. Right. They used to, they pastor giving them a jig and pass the plate around and then sing them a couple songs, you go. Because I, you know why people go to church? These same people out here who breaking God's Sabbath, shaking their ass, and having sex all day every day, you know you know why they go to church on Sunday? Yeah. For conscience sake. They go to church for conscience sake. Right. For their conscience. They don't go to church really to convert to the Lord. Yeah. Hmm. They, they don't go to the, they don't go to church of the Lord. Give me um give me Isaiah 52, 50, 52 and 3. I'm gonna show you some of my people done. I'm going to show you some of my people done. Isaiah 52, verse 3. For thus said the Lord, ye have sold yourself for naught. So the Bible said, thus said the Lord, our people have sold themselves for naught. You sold yourself for nothing. You think because you're on welfare, they're giving you money, you sold yourself for nothing. Because they give you a, 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 a contract in basketball, a, being a movie star, an entertainer, you think you sold yourself, you think you're making money. But you sold yourself for nothing. You sold yourself for nothing. The plan that the Most High had for you is to be over all the people in the world. Right. The whole world is created for you. Right. So the so-called white man can't give you nothing. 
that you really truly deserve. So the Bible say, we have sold ourselves for not. So that's what we're trying to show you, the value of the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are above all the people on the face of the earth. Right. They can't give you nothing but be submissive to you. That's the only thing they can do for you. It's to humble down to what you say in these scriptures. And give, my, um, give me Proverbs 3 and 13, it's the last verse. Because the Bible say we have sold ourselves for not. You know what I'm saying? We sold ourselves going to these, these, these um, theologian schools getting that higher education, thinking that's the way. It's not the way. The true way is right here, turning back to the laws and statutes of the commandments of the Most High. That's, right. how, that's how we uh, get true salvation. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what you truly graduate to. Go ahead. Proverbs 3, chapter 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. The Bible say happy is the man that find wisdom. Knowing your nationality, knowing, what, knowing your God, knowing how he look, knowing what he, um, he require of you. You know what I'm saying? Because you serve all the other gods and nothing, no God look like you. Hello, I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.